it's the at the brain performance center and many times a month people will come in and say you know i'm forgetting is this normal and it is normal to forget and it's normal to forget more as we age but the real question is how much is too much and there are people regardless of their age they remember better than we do some people are better at math some people are better athletes but there are some common memory problems that we'll probably experience at some point. And there are seven of them. The first is transience. And that is a tendency to forget something as soon as the event is over. Or right, sometimes we'll retain it for a couple of weeks and then we'll lose it. But a lot of people feel like transience is a brain weakness. And it's not. It's very helpful for the brain. It clears out those old memories that you're not using, and it makes room for new useful memories. It's kind of like cleaning out your closet. The second is absent-mindedness, and that really happens when you're not paying close attention. Have you ever walked in the house, talking on your phone, gone in, changed your clothes, put, came back, looking for your phone, you don't know where you put it? That's because you weren't paying attention and the brain could not encode the information in the right way. Absent-mindedness also comes when you're forgetting to do things that you're supposed to do. And that's easy. You can identify things that you can use as a cue to remind you. For instance, you need to take your vitamins every morning, put them right next to the coffee pot. They'll be right there waiting for you. The third is blocking. And I've experienced blocking, and that's when somebody asks you a question, and the answer is right on the tip of your tongue. It's right there. You can feel it, but you can't think of it. And there, that, of course, makes you feel like that you're losing it. Research shows that within one to two minutes, 50% of us will be able to recall that there's also things like competing memories that can interfere with that. Um, the fourth thing is misattribution. The best way to explain that is you're out to lunch with a friend and the friend says, do you know who Jill Smith is and why she was in the news? And very quickly, yes, I do. And you tell details of who Jill is and what she's done. And then your friend says, well, where did you get that information? And you stop and you think and say, oh, from the morning news. But you didn't. Right memory, wrong source. And that, that happens. The fifth is our bias. We all have bias. It gets in the way of things. Those negative bias, things we don't like. Well, in your memory, your perceptions and your experiences and your beliefs are all influenced by your biases. When you go to pull up a, a memory, recall that memory, that bias can come into play and can have a negative impact on you. The sixth is suggestibility. The vulnerability of your memory to the power of suggestion. You know, sometimes we'll get information and we'll, hit, we'll learn it after the event or the fact. And suggestion in our brain leads us to believe that that's a real memory. And the last is persistence. And persistence is a real memory problem. There are some people that have traumatic injuries, bad memories, and they cannot forget them. They don't want to think about them, but they do. You know, depressed people and people with PTSD are more prone to this. So, you know, brain memory problems exist and they can start early in life. They can start when you're in your 30s. So it's never too early to think about memory, brain health, what you can do. The first thing is be mindful. The brain works at its optimal level when it's calm. Be mindful. Stay in the present. Don't get lost in the past or worried about the future. And the brain loves to learn. Set aside some time every day to learn some new things. Because when the brain stops learning, it starts dying. So be intentional with learning new things. And do some coordination activities. Get your dance jam on. Go play tennis. But either, either one of those activities 
will boost the activity in your cerebellum. Now, the cerebellum is only about 10% of the brain volume, but 50% of the brain's neurons are there, and they're involved in increasing that thought and that physical coordination. Nutrition is something we could talk about all day long, so I'll keep it short. When you think nutrition, think high quality. Think quality, not quantity. And the last tip is stay hydrated. The brain is mostly composed of water, and when you're drinking too much coffee or alcohol, that dehydrates the brain. And the brain is not working at an optimal level until it's well hydrated. So if you're experiencing other memory issues, you may be experiencing some type of mild cognitive impairment. We have a video on that. It's on the website. You can look at that. Or if you'd like to just have a conversation and understand better what problems you're having with your memory and what you can do about that, I would love to talk with you. Please call and schedule a complimentary consultation.